All right, everyone, welcome back. So, Sheldon Keefe has been fired, and I have been stewing about this for just such a long time. The Leafs as a whole. I've been stewing about it since last Saturday when they lost in Game 7. It's, first off, it's one of the most unsurprising series, or unsurprising firings I've seen. I think, even like even though the Bruce Boudreaux hiring happened like two years ago and he we knew he was going to get fired... Um, I would say this is more unsurprising. I think we knew Keefe was gone before this series even started. Um, I think the consensus was that if if they lost in the first round, Keefe would be gone. And that was for both sides, too. There were talks of, well, if Boston blew a 3-1 lead, would you let go Jim Montgomery? That's a whole, whole conversation for another time. Obviously, Boston's in the second round now. But... Sheldon Keefe was hired in December of 2019. Now, I started making videos in January of 2020. So, right before the pandemic, essentially, um, I've looked... I, I remember when I was watching hockey, that team, just under Babcock, they weren't great. Stuff came out that kind of made you think, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Why? But the team didn't look great under Babcock. Sheldon Keefe comes in after a couple of years of winning stuff with the Marlies and looks awesome. Like, like the team looked solid. They were making a push at the end of the season. The COVID happened. They lost in the qualifying round. The roster, you look at it, wasn't that great. So there's that. And I remember the first time I started hearing talks of firing Keefe was in like 2021. After they collapsed that 3-1 lead. Now, they decide to hold on to Keefe. They hold on to Dubas at the time. Dubas was the GM. You move into 2022. That was when the talks really started, but that was a point where, like, people didn't... It was so uncertain because, again, ha had you swapped 2022 and 2021, you had that collapse in 2022, I think you tear it down. I think this whole team's completely different. But the issue is, is that that series was close. They lost 2-1. Had that goal counted, they probably would have maybe won the game. You have no idea. Then came 2023, and 2023 was like a gaslighting year for this team. I don't know. I don't know a better way to put it. This team, they won that series against Tampa, yes. And at the time, I said that, oh, yeah, it's an impressive run. They were doing awesome, and, you know, everything's great in Maple Leaf land. However, <clears throat> sorry, it, it, three of those six games went to overtime. Three of those six games. And... Toronto, or yeah, yeah, three of those six games went to overtime. Toronto won all three of them. So that shows you that, you know, three of the four wins they had were in overtime. Uh, they could have gone either way. Had Tampa gotten those three wins, they could have won the series. So honestly, like, I, I don't know. I, I, I genuinely don't know. And then this year, too, they have a really disappointing season, series against Boston. And that's when he knew there were going to be changes. If they beat Boston in seven, I, th I think honestly, even if they beat Boston in seven, if they got, if they play Florida again, if this is, if Toronto won in overtime and they're playing Florida right now and they're getting absolutely toasted, like toast. And if they lose in the second round, let's say five, six games again, I think they would argue there's progress. But since they lost in this in the first round yet again, it feels like they've taken a step back, so now they're going to make changes. Whether or not you think those changes involve Shanahan, Marner, Tree Living, Tavares, I've seen, you know, moving, moving Bertuzzi and Domi, bringing back Bertuzzi and Domi, firing Sheldon Keefe, keeping Sheldon Keefe, there was the consensus with pretty much every single Maple Leaf fan that you just can't run this back. You can't. You, you simply can't. We, you Like, if again, if they made the second round this year, there would have been progress. You would have been arguing, yeah, they're getting better. There's progress there. But no. No. So there's been a lot of talk about Mitch Marner. There's been a lot of talks about John Tavares. There's been a lot of talks about Brandon Shanahan. I think there's a big possibility that I could be making another video tomorrow in Toronto saying that Brandon Shanahan has resigned as Toronto's president. And it would make sense because Shanahan's been there for 10 years. Um, it, and, and what we've heard a lot of is that, oh, fire Mike Babcock, fire Lou Lamorello, fire Sheldon Key, fire Kyle Dubas. Those were all the guys that were around. Shanahan's been around since 2012. Toronto has won one playoff series in those years. I think it's 2014. I'm sorry. Can't do math. But 
he's been around that long and only one playoff series win. Now, granted, they were bad in some of those stretches. You could argue that 2017 was the year where they were rookies. You could argue that for 2018, too. But one playoff win in 10 years is not good enough. And I feel like the Toronto, the Toronto owners would be stupid to keep Shanahan around. I understand that, you know, you, you think that, oh, the president doesn't have a lot involved in it. I think if someone else was president, Marner would not be on this team. Marner would not be on the Maybe not even Nylander. Like, there would be players that wouldn't be on this team if it weren't for Shanahan. Because Kyle Dubas, I believe, tried to trade one of the core four, whether it was Marner, it doesn't matter. Whoever they tried to trade, Shanahan, Shanahan said no. Said no, you're not trading the core four. We're keeping it as is. I think if Shanahan gets fired, I actually, I honestly think that even if Shanahan stays, like I think, I think they're gonna have to move players, and that's where the hard thing comes in. It's gonna be hard to move these guys. It is. Now, had they moved Marner last year without the no move, movement clause, would have been way easier. Now it's way more difficult. And do I think there's a lack of interest for Mitch Marner? No, absolutely not. Now. Would I want Marner on my team? I don't know about that because there have been. You, you look at the plays. You look at the last playoff series. Marner's been, you know, people call him a soft player. Hasn't been that great and just doesn't show up in the playoffs. And that's the consensus for almost every player on this team. That's the thing. So, I, I honestly don't know. They're gonna have to make Marner agree to that no movement clause, which could be the hardest thing to do. <clears throat> and I think that. Just, you, you know, you might not see changes that Maple Leafs fans want. You might see you might see Shanahan get fired tomorrow. You might see Shanahan resign tomorrow. You might see that. You saw Sheldon Keefe get fired today. But when it comes to moving players, I don't know if we're going to see that. I, I, I genuinely don't know. Because Marner's getting paid $10.9 million. He's expiring next year. You know, Marner's agent said that he's taking team-friendly deals, which I don't know how 10.3 is a team-friendly deal, and saying that, oh, yeah, we can 100% get, you know, 12 million upwards of, you know, like you could get 11.5, like 12. It, first off, I don't know how you would be able to argue him making that money for a guy who doesn't show up in the playoffs and a guy who has reportedly been soft through a lot of his career so far. I don't hate Marner. I think Marner's a great player. Would I want Marner on my teams, though? No. I wouldn't want Marner on any of my teams. That's my thing. I, I don't. I don't want Marner. I don't. And I, and I am a I am a Philadelphia Flyers fan, and I am actually a Utah fan. I don't want any of those players. I don't want Marner. So it, it, I don't know. Honestly, you could talk about goaltending. You can talk about defense. You can talk about Matthews and Nylander and all that. What is the consensus? And I'll leave it at this: You can't run this back. So whether their coaches Barube, McClellan, you know, there's guys out there that you could give it to. I want to know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. There will be more videos on Toronto for sure. I'll definitely be making more videos, 100%. Apologies if I seem like I'm a little bit raspy. I still have that cold that I've been dealing with. And as well as that too, I still have been stewing a lot about this team. And I think that this is definitely not my last video of the offseason for this team. Definitely not. Especially if they move Marner. 100%. Um, I know there's going to be plenty of changes to this team in the offseason, so I want to know your guys' thoughts. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you enjoy, make sure to like, subscribe down below if you're new. Um, we love that. I'm less than 300 subscribers away from 3,000, so be mean the world to me if you guys can get me there. But regardless, uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.